Hey everyone, my name is Tegan and welcome back to Sandy Writes, where this is the probably most overdue review I've ever done. I read this book maybe, um, let's say November, December 2019, then I wrote the review a full 12 months later and I decided I should probably make the video review, because that's important to me, not anyone else because this is so overdue now, but to me. So this is my review for Call Down the Hawk by Maggie Stavotta. I think it's, it's here, might be that one. But this was one of my most anticipated books of 2019 and yeah, it's been a full 12, 15, maybe 18 months since it came out, so very overdue. So Ronan was always my favourite Raven Boy. I've said this in my review of the Raven Boys, my review of the Dream Thieves. I've mentioned it at any possible chance I get. And the Dream Thieves was my favourite of the original Raven Cycle books. So this is the trilogy well, the first book of the trilogy I've been waiting for since I finished reading the original series even though I wasn't sure what it could be about because I felt like everything between the brothers as this trilogy focuses more on the brothers than the main cast yeah I felt like everything between them had already been said so I was very I guess almost nervous for this book to come out. Ronan Lynch is a dreamer of both curiosities and catastrophes the dream is my favourite part of this book because I am in constant awe of how Stavotta manages to capture these very abstract moments between sleeping and awake in solid words. She's always had such a dreamlike quality to her writing, but this book made me feel like I was inside of those dreams, even if I couldn't grasp what all of them were about, or what they meant. They're very metaphorical, symbolic, setting up for the second book of the series. Jordan Hennessy is a thief first and a dreamer who doesn't want to dream second. In my opinion, she is the best addition to this world and I adore her and I can't wait to read more about her. Her storyline ties in the most with Declan, who has a lot more prominent role in this book than he did in the original series. And she also brings a lot of art into this book, which is something that I love. The Raven Cycle was very much like old cards, dead Welsh kings. And this one is more like sibling love and the end of the world and forging paintings. Love it. Carmen is a hunter. She's seen the damage of what dreams can do and I think her aim is to kill the dreamers before they can destroy the world. But honestly, I know very little about her other than what's stated in the blurb. I think I skipped over most of her chapters just because I felt so disconnected from her character and her storyline and was probably just like very overwhelmed with too many characters and also I think some of the viewpoints were just too bland to capture my attention which Car Carmen's I guess was and the characters involved in her storyline were also um they didn't really stand out to me especially because I was so focused on Ronan because I love Ronan and then Jordan Hennessy because she's involved with him and like she did feel very disconnected from the I guess the main story However, even though I seem to have skipped over what could have been like a third of the book, I didn't feel like I was missing anything. Because Karma's storyline was so separate from everyone else's until the final few chapters, where her just appearing at that point with no other context seems believable to me. <laughs> and that does sound bad, but she felt very disconnected. I think I gave this book 4 stars on Goodreads, but I honestly think I'd rate it more as like a 3.5 rather than the full 4 stars. The prose is beautiful and some of the characters are genuinely incredible, but I had more issues with the plot. I didn't feel like it really went anywhere outside of the dreams. And I didn't feel as if there was a clear end goal for this book or what the characters' individual storylines were until the very end which does make sense and I will almost forgive it as it is the first of three books and I think the second one comes out very soon, very soon. Still I'm very excited. Also this book, I know it's its own trilogy but I can't help but compare it to the original Raven Cycle and mm, it does lack some of the chemistry and these very consistently brilliant characters which made the original series so wonderful. It lacks the certain charm and the spark and also I think, I think this is still a YA book, but the characters are older now, Adam is off in college, so it does progress past like high school friends 
things are more serious and there's higher stakes now, even if I don't know what they are. It is possible to read this without reading The Raven Cycle. I've seen some people ask that when this came out. But you may probably, not it may, you will be robbing yourself of part of the experience as these characters' backstories and the original charm. And a lot of references that are summarised, because this book does mention key events from The Raven Cycle, just summarised. Yeah, and those summaries can only do so much. This is a very negative review. I thought I moved on from negativity in my life. Not in my life, but on my channel. But yeah, I want to see my honest opinions, but I do still love Mackie Spotter with all my heart and these characters. I just think, as this book was so hyped up, I might have expected more from it. And it fell short in the aspects that I wanted, even if they probably weren't intended to be in the book. I gave myself expectations that were completely different to what this was and I went into it blind and clung on to those expectations. Probably shouldn't have. But yeah, thank you for watching this video. I very much understand if you don't like it and give it a thumbs down. I get a lot of thumbs down recently. But thank you for making it, thank you for making it to this point and I will see you next time. Bye.